Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an upcoming Ryzen powered x86 SBC. And it's been a little while since we've taken a look at a new single board computer on the channel, mainly because the market has been just a bit stagnant. But with this board here, I've actually been really excited about it. I got an email about four months ago. This is known as the next SBC and they will be launching an Indiegogo. They're going to have a couple different RAM variants out there on the market. So definitely keep an eye out. As soon as it goes live or they put up the preview page, I will leave links in the description. But as you can see here, I mean, we've got a very small form factor. RAM is soldered to the board, so it's non-upgradable. And with their variants, they're saying they're going to be offering a 16 gig and a 32 gig option. One of the things that makes this board so special is the APU they opted to use here. Originally, they told me that this was going to be powered by the Ryzen 7 8840U, but they actually opted to go with the Ryzen 7 7840HS. Now we've got that same RDNA 3i GPU, 8 cores, 16 threads, and with the HS variant, we can take that TDP up just a bit higher. And I'm kind of speculating here, but I think they went with 7,000 instead of 8,000 just to keep that price down. I mean, I'm sure if you checked out SKUs, that 7,000 is probably coming in just a little bit cheaper than the 8840U right now, even though it's an HS variant. But either way, I mean, we've got a pretty powerful x86 SBC. It's not coming in as small as the Raspberry Pi 5, as you can see with this side-by-side, -side, but it does offer a lot more performance, and we've got more I.O. here. One of the coolest things, in my opinion, is this does support three M.2 SSDs. All of them can be PCIe 4.0, and you can go up to four terabytes with each, so you can add 12 terabytes of M.2 SSD storage to this SBC. And I do consider this a single board computer. Some companies put out boards where you have to add storage and SODIMM RAM. This has RAM soldered. It's actually LP DDR5 running at 6400 megahertz. Up front here, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two USB 3.2 ports, and USB 4 right up front. Round back, power input, and by the way, this will support 12 volts up to 19 volts to power the unit. Dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, dual full-size HDMI, and two more USB 3.2 ports. There's some extra headers here, so you could add USB 2 to this thing if you wanted to. But there are a couple things that I needed to add. Didn't come with storage, didn't come with a power supply. So I opted for a two terabyte Hynix drive and I've got a small form factor 120 watt power supply. When it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, this is using the AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS. And with this, we get eight cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.8, boost up to 5.1. We do get that Radeon 780M iGPU. It's based on RDNA 3 with 12 compute units and it'll clock up to 2700 megahertz. They're gonna be offering this with 16 and 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 at 6400. So remember, this is non-user upgradable. We've got those three M.2 2280 slots and this will support Windows or Linux. After all, it is an x86 platform. BIOS is pretty much unlocked. There are a few things that I wanted to show you here and there, but in this video, we're gonna be testing out Windows 11 Pro, and I'll have a dedicated Linux video coming up very shortly, so keep an eye on the channel. First thing I wanted to take a look at here was the BIOS, because out of the box with this thing, I've got Windows 11 Pro installed. I was only getting a TDP up to 35 watts, and for a lot of stuff, that's fine but I know that this 7840HS can do a lot more. Under power configuration, I'm gonna go to performance. Now there's more that we can do here, but I do think that this is gonna take it up and we'll have a look. We can also use a third-party app inside of Windows. But the next thing I wanted to do here was check out the GPU. So MBIO, graphics configuration, and this is set to auto. So what I'm gonna do here is go to specified, our frame buffer or VRAM dedicated to that iGPU, two gigs, and we can go up to eight. Since this is the 32 gig model, I'm gonna go to eight, but if it was the 16 version, I'd probably just go with four. That's all I'm gonna be changing here. And we're gonna save, get right into Windows. Now that we've got the performance mode taken care of, I'll give you a look here. We've got that 7840HS, eight cores, 16 threads, 32 gigs of LP DDR5. Remember it's soldered to the board here, so it's running a bit faster. I can't overclock it from the BIOS. There is an option to go up to 7,500 megahertz, but it really doesn't change it. So we're at 64. And of course the 780M, and we've dedicated that eight gigs of RAM. In performance mode from the BIOS, wanted to give you a look at the TDP. It's still not as high as it can be with this 7840HS. From CPU-Z, stress it out, 
right down here. This will jump up to 45 watts in performance mode and it is sustained, but I know this 7840HS can do a little bit more and with the cooling system being open air and everything, I think going to 54 is gonna be where it's at. So what I use is an application known as X86 Tuning Utility. From the custom tab, you can go through, customize all of this, but I've got a couple presets here. I'm gonna to go to 54 watts, so 54 sustained across the board. And there's another thing we can do here. Let's make sure this is in best performance, the Windows Power Mode. And our boost profile, this is gonna allow those CPU cores to boost up a bit more. But what I've noticed here is when this is set to performance, if whatever APU we're on just isn't getting enough wattage, it's gonna send more over to the CPU. So sometimes I'll even set this to power saving. That way we can get as much as possible over to that iGPU and get those higher 2700 megahertz clocks. But I'm gonna leave this at auto right now. So our preset is applied. And right down here before we were at 45, think this should work. And there it is, up to 54 watts. And even if I put a load on the iGPU right now, it's gonna stay at 54. We don't have any extra boost or anything like that. So this is what I'm gonna be running at through all of my testing. Pretty quick system so far, and even at 45 watts, it's not bad for everyday normal use case scenarios, but I'm gonna be using this mainly for gaming. And I will have another video coming up. We're gonna install something very similar to Steam Deck OS on this. We've got that iGPU, that higher wattage APU. I think we'll see some good performance. But now I wanna take a look at some benchmarks that I ran on this. Then we're gonna get right into some gaming. The first one we have here is Geekbench 6, and recently I tested out a mini PC with the 8845HS. That's at the bottom, but with this 7840HS at a 54 watt TDP, single core, 2,435, multi, 12,154. The 8845HS does do a little better here, even at that same kind of wattage. But when it comes to iGPU performance, this does have a lot of the mini PCs that are on the market right now beat because most of those use SODEM RAM and we can only do up to 5600 megahertz. We've got LP DDR5 at 6400 here. And just to give you an idea, on this board here with TimeSpy, we're at 3781. On that same PC with the 8845HS, scored a 3348 and that's because we've got that much slower RAM. And I understand that these are synthetic benchmarks but this really does transfer over to real world gaming. First game we have here is Red Dead Redemption. This is not Red Dead 2, this is the first one, uh, newly ported over to PC. Actually performs pretty decently on most of these iGPUs that I've tested it with. Right now we're at 1080 medium. Not too bad, I mean up in the hundreds in towns, which are kind of few and far in between with number one here, it does dip down into the 80s. But overall, I mean, you're definitely over 60 there and it looks great at medium on this system. Starfield, this was the only one I had to drop down to 900p, even with FSR 3.1 frame gen enabled. Sitting at 1080 with these same settings, low frame gen on, 50% resolution scale, we were seeing an average of around 56. And if you played this game on PC, you know, once you get into basically any city, that frame rate really does drop down. Out in the wide open, planet exploration, this is up in the mid 70s. Hey, that Doom Eternal, just a very well optimized game, still a lot of fun to play, can't wait for the new one to be released. We're seeing an average of 79 FPS, medium 1080, no resolution scale. Fallout 4, 1080 high. Originally, I went into this at 120 hertz with my monitor, but at 120 hertz with these same settings, you will see a dip under 60. I guess it's just kind of overrunning itself, but when locking it at 60 with these settings here, you can get it pretty steady. Overwatch 2, 1080p, medium, no resolution scale, so we're not using FSR, and if you did want to run this at 120 on a good monitor, Let's say you've got a pretty decent free sync monitor. You could enable FSR. It's gonna bring the resolution scale down just a bit there, but it's still gonna look pretty decent and you get that higher frame rate.
Spider-Man Remastered 1080, high frame gen on. That's just how I like to run this game, and I know there's people out there that don't like frame gen. And for those people, if you've got a higher end GPU, that's totally fine. You probably don't need it. But for these iGPUs, I don't see anything wrong with using frame gen, especially built-in frame gen technology. With a lot of these ported PlayStation games, it really does help out, especially in something like God of War Ragnarok. Without frame generation, this really does kind of fall on its face. We're seeing averages in the mid 80s with this game, and I know we're at low settings, but you could go through, tweak everything, probably low medium mix here with frame gen would allow you to play this at a steady 60 and still look really good. The last thing I wanted to take a look at here were CPU temps and total system power consumption. When it comes to CPU temps, remember we did take that wattage up above performance from 45 to 54. Using the stock fan curve, average gaming jumped up to 72 degrees Celsius and the maximum I saw was 89 while running a couple stress tests. We didn't hit thermal throttle, but I'm sure it could probably get there at a 54 watt TDP. And while testing this board, I've got it plugged into a kilowatt meter at the wall so we can get an idea of total power consumption. Idle, this does pull 13 watts. Average gaming jumps up to 66, and the peak or the maximum that I saw this thing draw was 79 watts. Again, we're at a 54 watt TDP, so at that performance, 45, it's going to be less here on the heat and power consumption. Overall, this board is a great performer. We've got some really good I.O. with that USB 4. We've also got three M.2 slots here. But when it comes down to it, it kind of looks to me that this company just used some type of main board for a Nook style device and kind of marketing it as an SBC. Now, if you're interested in something like this and like the performance, then yeah, I mean, this could be a good option if the price is right. They're claiming up to 329. So if they do release, let's say a 16 and a 32, obviously that 32 will be more expensive, but we'll really have to see once they launch the Indiegogo because you know, a lot of times uh, going off the bat, they do state, hey, this is gonna be a much lower price than it really is in the end. But if they can hit that price point with the 32 gig model and keep that 16 cheaper, might be worth it to some people out there. This should be going live by the end of the month, and their preview page will be up soon. I'll leave a link in the description as soon as I got more information. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. Definitely stay tuned to the channel if you want to see Linux running on this. I think I'm going to install Bazai on it, kind of get that Steam Deck experience on this thing. And I think even at a 45-watt TDP, we'll see some really great performance. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.